moving towards me and I heard this crazy like scuffling and I'm down here. I felt like an intense pressure around my ankles and I guess I slid across the floor. Who's here with me? We were right next to Rob and he just is freaking out at the moment. I would already be telling you what you already know about how haunted your house mm -hmm. is, but we're just trying to find out who or what it is because we captured some voices. You all right? What's going on? <sighs> what? Is there like a, a <gasps> big oh bug? My God. He was not even there for a couple minutes with us. It was like he just, he went somewhere else in his mind, I guess. Number eight, Burning Man's Room. In the dimly lit corridors of the Anderson Hotel, the air hung heavy with an ominous presence. The paranormal investigators, led by Nick, ventured into the infamous room known as the Burning Man's Chamber. Legends whispered of a tormented soul haunting this space, its existence etched in the half-burnt imagery that plagued the dreams of its former inhabitant. As they delved deeper into the investigation, inexplicable forces seemed to guide Nick, compelling him to move from room to room, a pawn in the unseen entity's twisted game. Armed with recording devices, they aimed to capture evidence of the malevolent spirit. In a chilling turn of events, playback revealed Nick's voice interlaced with a furious, otherworldly command, get out. The spectral voice echoed with an anger that sent shivers down their spines. Undeterred, they attempted to communicate, only to be met with violence. The cameraman, unsuspecting, felt a searing pain on his back as if teeth sank into his flesh. Shocked, they peeled back his shirt to reveal deep bite marks etched into his skin, a grotesque testament to the spirit's fury. Ow! <gasps> what happened? What happened? Here, bite mark there, right there. What is it? There. It's, um, it looks like a bite mark. You all right? What's going on? <sighs> what? Is there like a, a <gasps> oh bug? Oh my God. Did you feel anything before that, Rob? No, I didn't feel anything. I... Oh my God. Hold on, let me take it off. <gasps> Is, there a... Is that from oh your God. camera or? Sting? Hold on, hold on, hold it. Hold, hold on. Me right next to Rob. And he just is freaking out at the moment. Suddenly, the echoes of footsteps thundered down the corridor. A spectral sprinter, the embodiment of terror, racing towards them. The investigators stood frozen, engulfed in a nightmarish reality they had dared to confront. Number 7. Angry Louise The atmosphere was charged with anticipation as the investigators prodded the unseen entity to reveal its presence. They beseeched the spirit, calling out into the darkness, urging it to manifest in some way. In a bold move, one of the investigators, pointing towards a dimly lit corner, claimed to discern the faint echo of footsteps, a signal of the spectral visitor's proximity. Are you there, Louise? The investigator's voice trembled slightly, the name invoking a response they hoped for. Show yourself, stand before us. A tense calm settled over the room, the air thick with the weight of the unknown. And then, with an abruptness that shattered the tranquility, the atmosphere turned malevolent. A surge of anger, palpable and searing, erupted from the unseen presence. In a horrifying display of power, the investigator was thrown violently across the room, his body careening through the air before crashing to the floor. Panic gripped the remaining investigators as they rushed to aid their fallen comrade, their disbelief mingled with terror. The encounter had swiftly shifted from a quest for communication to a chilling demonstration of the entity's wrath. It was a stark reminder of the unfathomable forces they were grappling with, forces that could lash out with terrifying intensity at the slightest provocation. Number 6. In the midst of the Holzer Files investigation, the team sought communication with a malevolent presence. Save's inquiry about the entity's identity lingered in the air. As Shane diligently jotted down notes, his focus keen on deciphering any whispers from the beyond, an aggressive response shattered the silence. Who's here with us? Save's voice echoed, and in a chilling retort, the entity roared its name, Martha. Seconds later, chaos ensued. Shane, caught off guard, was violently shoved from his chair. His startled cry echoed through the room as he clutched his back, 
claiming an intense pinching sensation had assaulted him. I just heard Martha. Who's here with me? Felt like somebody pinched me in the back. See what's back there because I know that there's a big piece of this puzzle missing. Who just did that? Number five, forced to the ground. The premises eerie stillness hung heavy as lead investigator Dave meticulously calibrated his device, a contraption designed to decipher the spectral signals permeating the haunted grounds. His team watched with bated breath as Dave initiated his attempt to establish communication with the elusive entity. Are you present here? Dave's voice reverberated, his tone a mix of curiosity and trepidation. What is your identity? Can you hear me? A sudden change in the device's behavior sent a ripple of tension through the room. It began beeping frantically, a crescendo of signals that seemed to respond to Dave's inquiries. His colleague cautioned, their voice tinged with concern. Easy now, Dave. It's reacting strongly. The spirit's making its presence known. Before any further words could be uttered, the device's frantic beeping intensified, reaching a fever pitch. In a terrifying whirlwind, the entity lashed out. Dave was thrown violently to the ground, the force of the attack shocking both him and his team. The room crackled with a malevolent energy as the spirit's wrath manifested itself with terrifying immediacy. Fear gripped the investigators as they witnessed their lead. As the team ventured in, it felt like any old cabin, a tad creaky, adorned with antlers and trophies. But things spiraled fast. Tanner, one of the crew, was jolted out of reality, dragged, violently. Picture this. He's there. Then he's not. His screams cut through the silence as an unseen force yanked him across the living room. You could sense the fear gripping his soul, his face contorting with terror. Oh, oh, no. He was not even there for a couple minutes with us. It was like he just, he went somewhere else in his mind, I guess. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna just stop you. You keep rolling if you want, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I felt like an intense pressure around my ankles and I guess I slid across the floor. I saw you, I heard you trip behind me, but what did you just feel? It's the stuff nightmares are made of. No warning, no explanation. You may try rationalizing, blaming the creaky old floors, but this was no ordinary tug. Tanner's shaken, pale as a ghost now, and who could blame him? The demon lurking in that lodge has made its ghastly presence known, and it wasn't looking for a peaceful chat. This investigation made Tanner almost quit. Number 3. The Hunter Gets Hunted In the eerie realms of paranormal investigations, David Olson, a seasoned ghost hunter, met his chilling reckoning. In the heart of Appleton, Wisconsin, darkness descended as he stepped into a haunted house. Unbeknownst to him, a malevolent force lurked, ready to unleash its wrath. Within seconds, an unseen entity struck. A searing sensation crawled across his neck, as if a fiery hand branded his flesh. Witnesses stood aghast as welts materialized, etching a sinister tail on his skin. The night cloaked itself in terror as he endured a second assault, this time near his eye, tearing skin and drawing blood. Olson, once a skeptic turned believer, had fortified himself with Misty, his spectral arsenal, a converted ambulance pulsating with state-of-the-art surveillance. Yet no defense could shield him from this spectral assault. His evidence, captured on upgraded 4K cameras and spectral imaging, showcased haunting figures wandering cemeteries, leaving experts speechless but none rivaled the terror etched upon his very being. 
the marks of a ghostly encounter burned into his memory. Number 2. Holly's House In the quiet of night, the investigators were spooked out of their wits when Jay, amidst his ghostly exploration, took a tumble near a cliff's edge. He nearly plummeted into the abyss, but was saved by a tiny tree. Yet the eerie encounters were far from over. At Holly's desolate abode, they stumbled upon hair-raising audio, unsettling knocks and mysterious sounds echoing through the empty rooms. The twist? When morning broke, Holly's place looked undisturbed, despite the chilling disturbances captured on tape. Jay, are you all right? Oh my God, there's bricks everywhere. Where are you hurt? My ribs, my leg. Footsteps. Uh, it was really quiet. And then, as soon as I went on your upper floor... Is anything broken? I'm, I don't know. I'm like, I, was, I looked over kind of that direction, I think. The one that you said that there's a weird energy to? Yeah. As soon as I went in there, it was like I walked into a completely different building. Moving towards me, and I heard this crazy, like, scuffling, and I'm down here. Touch my head! Yeah, something just touched the top of my head. And I felt something touch my hands. I would already be telling you what you already know about how haunted your house mm -hmm. is, but we're just trying to find out who or what it is because we captured some voices. But it didn't end there. Footsteps echoed through the silent house, but no living soul was there to make them. Worse yet, eerie sensations, touches, shadows moving, sent shivers down their spines, as if an invisible entity roamed the halls, haunting their every move. Number 1 the Phantom Cowboy. In the investigation of the Phantom Cowboy haunting, the team encountered eerie phenomena. An investigator was inexplicably burned, his arm registering white hot on a temperature gun. Simultaneously, the producer, alone, heard phantom footsteps and his arm seared with intense heat. These unexplained attacks intensified the chilling reality of the haunting, leaving the team deeply unsettled and questioning the nature of the malevolent entity they faced. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.